Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Quest for Truth, Hidden Mysteries TV. I am so excited to have my dear friend with me, Lisa Gavron. Lisa, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me, Karina. This is so exciting. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you. Um, now, you guys, Lisa is a dear friend. I've known her for about 20 years, and she is an incredible, incredible, gifted powerful woman she is a life coach she is a teacher and she is a revelator so i'm so excited to be able to have lisa with me today so that she can share what um father has put inside her heart and the mandate that he has woven inside her beautiful powerful blueprint this mandate that is specifically for this moment in time. So Lisa, I'm so excited to have you um, share with us, please. What do you feel that the mandate that Father Divine Creator has for you to unfold and unveil in this moment in time? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it started about 25 years ago, actually, and working in um, youth camp and um, just having some major experiences, you know, back in the day. And um, as we knew it in church, as we knew it, as we knew the camping ministry um, and working specifically, I was working with uh, teenagers and young adults that were just ready to be into college and everything. And so they've always, always, always been in our heart, you know, and um I was in prayer at that time and um, just kind of sitting in conversation with a couple of the youth at that time. And they were just sharing some things. And just internally, you know, I kept hearing Father say to me, there's a revelation generation is what he began to speak to me. And so taking that from 25 years into today, you know, it's one of those things that we wait upon before we find the revelation sometimes of what it means. And so many times over the years, I could identify actually certain young people. And I would, you know, I would get that intuitive knowing that this person is a part of the revelation generation. Mm -hmm. And so to say that, just kind of break it down and make it easy for all, you know, everyone in the audience um, just so that we understand, you know, when we talk about the word revelation, I feel like most people immediately go to the book of Revelation, right? And most of the time, it's it's more in a negative connotation, I believe. There's a lot of fear that is wrapped around that. Um, just as you're speaking about the word apocalypse, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's instant fear in that. But when we really dive in, and we have an understanding of the truth of our words, um, then we begin to settle with that. So revelation really means what we do is we reveal, we uncover, uh, we lay bare, you know, anything that's hidden. You know, there's an old scripture that says everything that's in darkness will be brought to light. So it's like taking it and turning it over so the light can shine on it. Um, and I really love this. It's disclosure, which is a really current word. And that just popped up, you know, in the definition. But the one that really touches me is making known divine truth. Wow. That's what revelation is, making known divine truth. And sometimes it takes many years for us to be able to see and understand or even hear mm -hmm. divine truth, right? Then, so I'm going to capture the word together with generation. And so this revelation, a generation is to bring forth a line of descent. And so that means, it, you know, it goes on and on. It continues. It continues. And um, I, I just had a little bit of a thought this morning came to me that if we just separate the word, it's gene ration. If we separate generation, it's a gene, which mm -hmm. is producing, right, life. So that's where it started. So today, I just, my heart was to really speak to this revelation generation. This is the time when we're coming into the revealing of the word and we're healing generations of belief systems, right, as well as the hearts of people. 
Yeah, this is so good, Lisa. Making known divine truth. That is very powerful. So what what do you feel? How how would these uh, revelation generation know that they are part of it? Like we have people watching and what what can you, you know, they're like, hmm, I wonder if that's me. What are some of the mm, points that they can look at or symptoms, if you will, that they sure. can tell that, oh my gosh, is this me? Yeah, yeah. Um, the ones, I'll start with the ones that I have been able to identify. Mm -hmm. And this is what pulls me. And it's those that are um, what we say in old time religion, you know, there's a fire in their belly, right? They're speaking up for truth. They're speaking up for injustice. They're, um, they're learning their sovereignty. They're learning to stand in their own power and have their own voice. Yet there is such a gentleness in their whole countenance, their spirit, that they, they're peaceful. Mm -hmm. There's such a difference. So I would say if that resonates in your heart, you are a revelation generation. I don't want to capture it into an age block, right. but I do see that um, the generation that's coming up are, are all, I would say, under 35, mm -hmm. anyone under 35. Another way, um, I know that the new age is speaking a lot of things about, you know, indigo children. Uh, we hear the words alphabet children, which really means the A ADD, the ADHD, uh, autistic, <laughs> those type of words that we're using now. But yet um, they are a part of this too, because they've really come in um, <coughs> with, a, with a mandate. Mm -hmm. And a way to not um, buy into the system, you know, which we're calling this the matrix now. And so this is part of the real revealing of the word too of this generation. So just to go back to what you were saying, the ones that are watching that have a desire and a passion, a fire inside of them to reveal the truth, to speak truth, yet they do it in love. And they have this realization of, wait a minute, whatever I heard, that's not true. This is true. Even if it's contradicting what they've heard, like the, on the mainstream waves, right? Is, is that what you're saying? So the ones that are like, wait a minute, the ones that see contrary to what the matrix is trying to show us, is that what uh, you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's as if they have this deep knowing that they just came at in with that they're not buying into the stuff right they're not buying into the system and um uh, i know that um in times past that was called rebellion but i don't believe that it's rebellion because the the innocence of the heart mm -hmm. of what is going on is just something does not feel right something yeah. is not right when there is control when there's manipulation when there's pain and suffering when there's abuses yeah. and um, our generations are beginning to see that and our young people are crying out. I mean, all you have to do is open up a TikTok and they are on the TikTok and they're start they're starting to put out, you know, three, three yeah. to six second messages. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is a generation and they, they've come in with a message, I believe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just as simple as to get on a TikTok and just speak your truth right? And you're doing it in love. It's, it's making an awareness and they're trying to bring in disclosure. You know, we're hearing those words. They want to uncover, they want to peel back, right? Layers. Uh, they're researchers now. So there's such an excitement that I see with that. Yeah. You know, you're right. Because lately I've seen, you know, like you said on TikTok, like, young teenagers, you know, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 20, 25, um, even a little bit older. But what shocked me is the younger ones, you know, like in the teens, right? The 15, yeah. 16, 17, they're making these videos and bringing truth. They're bringing the truth about what's happening to the children. They're bringing the truth about these um, Hollywood, you know, Illuminati people, right. these elite that are you know, they're, they're just speaking truth that you would never thought that you would hear from that age group. In other words, they're awakening. I mean, even my, my children, right. you know, that are in that age group, 
are like, mommy, yes, I've seen this. I, this is what they're talking about. So there is definitely an awakening. Now, Lisa, why do you feel, let me ask you this. I have a few questions. So let me start with this. Why do you feel that there is an awakening of this, these, this age group that we have not seen before, you know, because before they would be like, oh, this is stupid. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous sci-fi. This is, this is ridiculous. But now they're actually not only seeing it, but they're feeling so compelled that they want to share it out there on TikTok. Why, why is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. There is just, to me, they are just a different breed, (laughs) so to speak. And, um, it, it's it's so beautiful to to hear them and see them that they're so unlike the kids that I, I had in camp. You know, you might identify maybe three or four out of a crowd of 100 that really, really knew their voice and knew that they had a voice and there was strength in it. But I'm telling you what, this, this revelation generation that's coming in um, and that is here and actually has not really been identified, I don't believe. And I believe that it's taken 25 years for us as adults to begin to recognize them and to know them and give them their place. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a fire that is burning in them of truth and to set things in order or, or even create resets. There is a phenomenal intelligence and knowledge that they're bringing forth. They're such creators and able to, um, to speak, Mm-hmm. to speak truths that um, are beyond their years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like an old soul, right? Mm-hmm. They're like old souls and they're coming forth with such wisdom. And, you know, I just, there was such a, um, such a burning in my heart and a breaking in my heart in, in, mm-hmm. in, a, in a pure way that was, man, some of them need someone to speak up for them. Yeah. You know, there needs to be an adult that aligns with them and go, Hey guys, you're doing an awesome job, right? You're doing some things that the church world adults, your parents would never have done. They've never been brave enough. And the truth in reality is, you know, I have been one of those until I came into my awakening and I walk the everyday church life. Mm-hmm. And um, thankfully, I love being around young people because I love that they do not think like I think they have a different perspective and a different view. And if I will pay attention and listen with not just my heart and my, uh, uh, my ears and my mind, I listen with my heart, then I hear them and it keeps me young, which is not childish, but childlike, which brings me to what Jesus Yeshua has always talked about. He said, Bring and permit the little children to come to me. Mm. Yeah. For such as these is the kingdom realms, which means exactly. really infinity, which means everything. Yes. Because and the now. And the now. Yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, wow. Okay. Um, wow. Now, Lisa, I know we have them watching us and I know that they're feeling that they might be feeling this inside of them what what can you encourage them to do if they're feeling this fire they're like oh my gosh I feel something I don't I don't see what they want me to see I see things so different what do I what do I do? I don't know what to do because nobody understands me. You know they think I've lost my mind or I have no one to share this with peer pressure but yet there's a fire in them to share their truth what, what do you want to, you know, they're like, how do I start? What do I do? What do you want to encourage yeah. them with? Or what do you yeah. want to share with them? I, I love that they're reaching out to multimedia. I think that that's a great platform. <clears throat> I would say um, it, it's one of those things that um, we don't want to come against each other. We want to make an equal playing field for all. In other words, in some ways, you don't even see an age. You listen to the voice right? You listen to that voice of truth. And, you know, I had an experience with truth that it's like a fire. Truth is like a fire. And it's, it's, it's not the, the, the burning fire that's going to hurt you. It's the one that makes things clean. It purifies, it makes things new. It's, it's like 
the moth drawn to the flame. And I believe truth works with love, right? They are so um, a, a part of one another. Like we see the, the, the yin and the yang, right? They flow together and you're drawn. You're drawn into it so that you seek more of the truth. And so I would just really encourage them to speak in those platforms, take those opportunities um, and start trying to find those that are like you too. If they're on your, you know, they're listening on your program, some way to start, you know, maybe their own own group or that type of thing. And I, I definitely, and I intend to do that, to call this a revelation generation and begin to kind of hold some, um, you know, maybe we do some Zoom meetings or, or whatever that we can start putting us together and connecting. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can kind of hub that, right, is my desire to be able to do that. But one thing, um, I think that I would want to speak first to the parents, right. to the parents. Um, I feel that there's so many parents out there that have these children that come in and, and if we can go there, uh, some kids are having memories mm -hmm. yeah. that, hey, I was here before. Yeah. So there's the reincarnation word, right. you know, that everyone in the church world is really scared of. Mm -hmm. But we know that this is coming forward and it is something to be talked about because you may have a child that has memories. You know, you may have a four-year-old that's starting to tell you all kinds of things. And if you start looking and listening, the information is out there and, and the proof is becoming uh, very real yep. to, these, to these stories where they actually can identify the individual, the date, you know, the year, uh, places that they're remembering. And so we, we can't just pass that off, that there's, there's no truth in that. So if you have children that way, you have gifted children, children that are cre creating incredible art, mm -hmm. um, things that I, you know, I would call the supernatural gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, they just come in or they see things, they hear things, they know how to heal. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching children yeah. that just intuitively know how to move their hands or to, you know, to, to feel heat. They know how to generate frequency. They know where to touch someone. You know, if there's a shoulder, they, they see into the body. And so we have these, this generation that's coming up. And these gifts are here to heal our world. Yes, They're here to heal our planet. So I would speak to the parents. One, one thing that I felt was so important to bring out. And we have believed in our generations of parenting children or leading children in Sunday school or however we were doing, even, even in the school systems. Mm -hmm. And we've had a belief of original sin. Right, go there, go there. We have believed and bought into the lie <clears throat> that our babies were born in sin. And what I am being shown is that that belief is the sin, actually, that is passed on from generation to generation to generation. And it, it smears the destiny of that child before it ever comes out of the womb. Because we're creators. So the moment I look at that and I say, oh, my child is being born with sin. Because I am a creator, right? Because whatever yes. I'm focusing on, I create. That's what quantum physics says. It takes yes. an observer to create a reality. So you're saying that they're literally creating that reality over their child when that's never, that was never meant. Father never, we're made in his image. Are we either, are we full of sin when we're born or are we made in his image? So that's what you're saying, Lisa, right? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the the whole thing is almost as if you, um, you, you create a, um, a blockage to that child's destiny. Wow. So to start with, the way to reconcile that is to, is to correct that, is to forgive yourself, one, as a parent, for that false belief, because that's a belief system. So the spirit of truth can come in even now. The moment that you're able to recognize this and you're able to go, oh my goodness, right? 
I did buy into that. I did believe. Now, maybe you're in your awakening now, and that's beautiful, but there's still places where we can correct those things just with the power of our words. What? Because we recreate that timeline. Very good. So I, as a parent, I can, I can look at my child that's coming up at any age. And if they're at the age of understanding my words, I can say, you know what? I have forgiven myself. I realized that I believed into a religious system, a religious programming system that you were born into sin. Mm. And I just want to say, I am very aware of that. And I'm removing that off of yes. you, that blockage off of your destiny. You don't need to cry and repent and say, I'm sorry to your children. You need to be aware and forgive yourself, number one. And then just speak to that child and go, listen, listen let me share with you this revelation yeah. that I have of revealing that I'm removing that off of you and I'm setting you forth and I'm setting you free for your destiny. And any place where my belief system has hindered you, I want you to know that has been dispelled because we're recreating now and we're going to create together. And what comes with that is the power of this child, yeah. even the baby unable to speak yet. This child brings in the gift with them get this a forgiveness yeah that is the gift these children are not created um so much for love they're created for life mm -hmm. they're to bring new life into this realm with forgiveness now let's talk about what you've been doing karina with the revolution is here and the children so we're, we're trying to, to work within that, all the atrocities that have been done. When we see children that are, are, are wounded or, or mistreated, um, <laughs> just even, you know, you can be in the grocery store and you can see a Walmart moment, you know, where this conflict is happening between, you know, a parent and a child. And that child will still forgive. Yeah. So tell me then, why did Yeshua, why did Jesus say, permit the little children to come to me for such is the kingdom? In other words, and if you do not become as a little child, right, which is the power of forgiveness, mm -hmm. you must have that forgiveness in you. And I believe with everything in my heart that that Jesus came to tell us not as a savior for salvation. He came to teach us forgiveness is the greatest message. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. message of forgiving, not to rescue you, but to bring forgiveness in love, this power of love and forgiveness working hand in hand will completely um, um, burn out this religious matrix programming, yeah. it will burn it out of you. Because when the two work together, we call it just like an arc, right? right. It starts clicking. It starts clicking and it recreates an old, old timeline, an old paradigm, an old belief system. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. for this revelation generation, bring with you to the adult that you might be having difficulty with bringing your gift of forgiveness of, Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. I, I don't hold anything against you. We're letting it go because I came in to usher this beautiful thing of forgiveness over this planet and to work in partnership with you now. So that's another thing this, this generation can begin to do is, is, we, we can begin to see one another, not as hierarchies. And I, you know, I was raised in a, in a lot of fear to obey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I spoke my truth, I was afraid that I would be shut down. And I was shut down. But see, there's such a misunderstanding of conflict that we've gone through in this programming. And I believe the great reconciliation, there's, you know, there's a scripture that talks about 
um, this opportunity for humanity where we can be a repairer of the breach, a restorer of places to dwell in. Yeah. So we want to create a new world. We're creating uh, a place to dwell in that's harmony and it's beautiful. This is the beginning. Yeah, that's so good. Lisa, I know you mentioned it, but let's go back and maybe jump even more in depth because I'm sure there are parents watching that are realizing <clears throat> that they have done just that, you know, under this uh, religious programming, this matrix that we've been in, believing and even engaging with that false truth that the child is born in sin. So with that being said, I know that there are parents watching that are going, oh my gosh, I've done that. And maybe they were not even able to go past into you breaking it down, how they can break that because they're still stuck there. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? And you said something very powerful, which is to change the timelines. And I know probably, you know, those parents watching are going, what the heck? How do I, how do, I do sure. that? What do you mean? So can you even break it down a little bit more on what that means to change the timeline? Because, you know, it's a very quantum word, <laughs> you know, change yeah. timeline. So bring it down um, into really what it means. And then walk them step by step in a simplistic way of how they do that, which we know it's basically doing the opposite, right? But how walk them down, please, if you don't mind. So again, what do you mean change timelines, change the timeline? And how do I do that? Yeah. Change, changing timelines really is as simple as the moment that you become aware of something that is counter to the belief you just had. In other words, you had a revelation. I call it the light bulb moment. Everything came on and you were very aware of the resonance even in your body. Now let's take it past your mind, right? Okay, so I've got it in my head. I see it. I hear it. Ooh, that hurts or I'm sorry, right? You, you start feeling it now in your heart. So that awareness at that very moment that truth is revealed to you and you receive truth, doesn't the scripture tell us that the moment you receive truth, you're free. So freedom in knowing and understanding the opposite of what you first believe begins to change the timeline. At that moment, your belief system begins to create new. And that sets the new mark of the timeline. And it can completely rewrite an old system mm -hmm. because of how your intention is to move forward. You know, we can look at it in, in the way that we would see it in the scriptures from old days, the way we were taught. And again, this is yet another revealing of the word where Jesus would speak to someone and he would tell them, um, whatever they've done, and then he's healed them to, to give a big overview. And he said, and he said, turn around and go and sin no more. We know those scriptures. It's not sin now, it's awareness. Mm -hmm. It's an awareness of a better way. Mm -hmm. It's a better way of doing something. In other words, that thing before that we called sin was when we didn't understand a better way and we did it in the way we've been taught or we carried it through our generations from a belief system. But to see the whole point of this is, is the responsibility that we take ownership mm -hmm. for believing something that we were taught rather than we received on our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just like, so what you're saying is just like how in these stories from the Bible, Yeshua changed the timeline of that particular person that let's say couldn't walk, right? Absolutely. And when he said, now, you know, a new way, yep. the way of no longer being an invalid, no longer being sick, no longer whatever the situation was before. So what you're saying basically is to the ones watching the parents is the moment you get the truth revealed, you get new knowledge and understanding that right there, that moment of your knowing now changes your timeline. Absolutely. If you engage with that knowing, in other exactly. words, if now, you know, wow, my child was not born in sin. 
that right. knowing presents itself, right? Yeah. And then absolutely. when you choose to be like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to do that. That right there changes that timeline, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the truth that sets us free. And it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, right? right. And so every every day is an opportunity for this revelation generation to begin to be accepted for all of their gifts and the wisdom that they're bringing in that actually we would have called a much higher knowledge. And so we, as, as parents now in this generation, and I'm talking those, you know, 40 and up, mm -hmm. um, we've got, you know, a 50, 60 year thing there of differences here. And it's, it, we're the ones that's been the most programmed. So it's going to take um, our awareness and forgiving of ourselves is, is the first thing, right? And you beat yourself up and you go, I should have, could have, would have. And there you are staying in the timeline. But instead of owning the responsibility of, oh, yeah, 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 I missed it on that one. It's okay. You missed it. See, that's where then our children can bring forgiveness, which is the thing that we need. Mm -hmm. The adult world needs mm -hmm. to understand forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So we yield a little, right? And we speak awareness to our children at any age. They in turn reciprocate with this beautiful thing of forgiveness. This changes the entire timeline, not only in your, um, in your line, but it will begin to heal the planet because this thing will continue to move forward. The spirit of truth will move like fire yeah. and it will burn up the lies. Yeah, that's really good, Lisa. What What is coming to me is when you're talking is for you guys to understand what Lisa is saying, these are such amazing um, truths that she's bringing. So for the parents watching, the moment you do what Lisa said, when you get that the truth that brings the knowledge of your child is no, not a, he was not, he and, or she was not born in sin. Then that opportunity for the new timeline appears. Now it's your choice as we all have choice. If you're going to step in it. Now, if you step in it, Lisa, this is what I was hearing as they step in it. Now they are no longer going to be saying the crap that they said when they were in the other timeline of my child was born in sin. So I have to be careful, oh my gosh, because, you know, sin, you know, sin is there and, you know, yep. the heart is evil and it's dark and it's, no, what you're literally doing is you are going to speak those things that are not, you don't see them yet, but you're right. going to speak them because, you know, they're attached to life. They're attached to abundance. They're attached to love. And that's what you are going to begin to speak over your child. And then that creates that very reality, right, Lisa? Yes, that's it does. That's basically what you're saying. It does. It creates a, a whole new timeline for you to begin to build from. Mm -hmm. And there is deep, deep generational healing that happens in this. It, it's like magic. I mean, it really is. The, the gift of forgiveness and speaking out of our awareness, um, you're not having to correct anything. In other words, you don't have to go back. Say your child is 17 years old. You don't have to go back 17 years. Take that child today. Take that young adult today and go, hey, let's sit down and have a talk about this, right? So this is the how-to. Let's sit down and have that talk and be truthful with this generation because listen they know what bs is and yeah. this is where we lose respect and all of these words that that we get tangled with of there's a generation gap but there's no gap except the one that you allow yeah yeah that's if true. i am vulnerable with you and i come to you with my heart how in the world would I not be able to receive that back from you, Karina? Yeah. Right? It's building the bridge. It's a repair of the breach. If there is a generation gap, if there's a gap, a breach is a gap in the communication, in the relationship. So these are the only things that can bring us back together. And that's what begins to heal the planet right there. It starts yeah. there. Then we start working together rather than against each other, we start listening to the new things that are coming forth 
which is the revelation generation coming out this, that has a voice and they have something to say because they have the answers. Let me tell you something. They're coming with answers that are going to fix and heal this planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say even up to the cosmos mm -hmm. and beyond. Mm -hmm. They're coming in with it. Yeah. Because it, it's it's so beautiful, you know, and, and I just kind of hear some people saying, well, well, what about those children that are born, you know, um, whether there was incest or there was a violent crime, whether there was rapes and those kind of things. Listen, it's not about being created in love. That is an old belief system. That child was created for life. However, it decided to come in. Good, good point. Humans create humans. Yeah, good point. Creator brings forth the soul. Mm -hmm. So if our father, God, cannot stand to look at sin as we believed in the old days, then you know what? The soul would never have been allowed to come through. That's good. That's a good point. Very Some good things point. are just very logical. Yes. And we've made it so mystical that we've missed the absolute truths that are right there in front of us. Well, yeah, we've we've given our common sense and we've thrown it down the toilet just for stuff that we knew that they don't make sense. We knew it if we just go with, you know, with common sense. But we've been told that that's bad. Because yeah. the mind is corrupt, right? The heart is the most evil and the mind is corrupt. Yes. So things my heart, yeah. Saying, I mean, the things that you're saying, it's like, it's common sense. If he couldn't look at sin, that's really, say it again, Lisa, because that's really good. <clears throat> if God could not stand sin and he didn't wink at it or look at sin, then, it, then this child, this pure essence of the soul from creator, this loving father, that doesn't see that, that child would not even come through. So this child was created in, uh, um, from the breath of father. Mm -hmm. That's why we're a part of father. Mm -hmm. That's the God spark that we talk about. It comes in through the soul. We just create the avatar or yes. the vehicle that it comes. Uh, it's ushered in through the womb to come out they begin to work that begins free will yeah, yeah that's the so gift cool. of free will mm -hmm. so cool. from the moment that we have believed the the lie in the system that our babies are born in sin then what what are we doing also in that too and i just want us to recognize our belief systems mm -hmm. wow it's really powerful. This little bitty message is so powerful, isn't it? Well, yeah. And, you know, if you look throughout the history, the dark ones, who, who have they come after, really? Mm -hmm. The children and the women. Absolutely. Women bring forth life That's and children are the carriers of that. That's right. Because they just believe. Yep. They just believe. They don't need to analyze. They don't need to, you know, um, do it insanely difficult. They just believe mm -hmm. and they forgive, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. That's the purity of innocence, right? You know, innocence, we say, you know, the, the innocence of a child and we talk about that. And what that means, it's freedom from guilt or any moral wrong. So how could you even begin to call that sin? You must come as a little child is what it says in Matthew you and why was he speaking to the adult yeah he didn't have to tell that innocent soul that came through into a flesh body yeah. that it was morally corrupt because there's no way it could have been because nothing that comes from father correct is corrupt good see humans create humans source gives the souls creator mm -hmm. creator does not give defective or despised blessings folks does not Instead, a child is born with an innocent, untouched soul, and he or she begins to mature to have the decision of free will. Choice is given for this life. Yeah. So good. So good. And we have, you know, I'm just thinking back for my beautiful Christian audience. You know, maybe, maybe you are 
a child um, that, you know, in this picture that I'm going to paint, or maybe you were the parent, or maybe, you know, you're pregnant now and, you know, you're expecting. So this is a learning uh, opportunity for you because can you imagine how many children, you know, this because we've talked before, have come in with special gifts, but it does not fit in the Christendom theological box because unfortunately all, all Christianity was teaching through its um, uh the theology was angels and demons. Mm -hmm. That's all. It did not have room. And even angels cannot be women. If you see a female angel, that's a demon masquerading because we cannot find any female angels in the Bible. So I mean, right. So mm -hmm. imagine how many children were born with special gifts that could not fit in this theological box of what we were allowed to believe and know and what we were not. So can you imagine how many parents then did not either, either they didn't know what to do with a kid, with a child, counseling, even demonic deliverance? Yeah. I mean, Lisa, we've talked about this before. Talk about yeah. that a little bit because, and children that have experiences and encounters with beings that are not angels and they're not demons, they're create they're 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 part of our family that father divine creator has created because you guys we're not the only ones he created i'm sure all of you watching know that by now for those of you that are new to our channel we are not the only ones father's a creator he loves creating there's gazillion planets out there so they all have life so go ahead lisa talk about that a little bit well it's so interesting because you know i was thinking of um just because i don't see it i don't believe it we you know i was raised with that well i don't believe it until i see it you know we've said those things so folks i'm telling you i am part of that generation that has had to become aware and um work through this and and give myself forgiveness for what I knew and what I taught, but yet own the responsibility of where I am today so that I can begin to change all of those time timelines. Mm -hmm. And um, we're making an alignment now. You know, we're bringing everything into a, this beautiful alignment. So the belief that you have very much a uh, um, affects our children. Yeah. Even if you're a teacher, because they look up to you, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're listening, they're learning, they're opening, but this is a revelation generation that needs, that we need to realize they have something to say just as valuable. And it's just as important as what you have to say. So there is this give and take, there's this ebb and flow that must come mm -hmm. with this generation for us to be able to accept the gifts that they're bringing in and actually wanting to give to us. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hearing a child because of my own old belief that, well, that's demonic or, you know, they, they have, you know, something nefarious in their room, these experiences that they're having. But the, the thing is, what do you do with it when they're not afraid and you are? Yeah, that's, yeah, let's go there. What do these people, what do the parents do, Lisa, when yeah. they cannot go to their leaders in church because they, they know the leaders will say, this is a demon. Uh, or that's not in the Bible, you know, and they put fear in the parents. So what, what is their parent to do if a child obviously taps into realms and give things that are not mentioned or are not okayed by the powers that be um, in the churches? What does a parent do? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I can't give them a total advice because that's your child and, you know, you have... Um, your relationship with them, but I, I can share with you what I've done with others and, and help to kind of counsel with what would happen if I decided rather than to not believe my child, what if I changed my awareness and I believe the pureness and innocence of my child mm -hmm. and I sat with them one afternoon or we walk into the woods or we have a picnic or whatever that child just loves to do when it wants to talk to you and tell you everything. And, you know, when they do the precious thing of mommy, look at me, that is the time to engage with your child. Mm -hmm. Start asking questions, become like Jesus said, like Yeshua said, come and be as a little child. That's not childish. Mm -hmm. 
that is an innocent heart full of love, wanting to understand, exploration, curiosity, dreaming, Mm -hmm. all of those things, playfulness, engage with that child or children and ask them questions. I remember you talking about whatever it was that, oh, there was, you know, an angel in my room. Tell me about that angel. And um, how do you, how do you communicate? How do you, you know, what do you all say? What do you talk? And let me tell you something. It opens up a huge um, platform and paves a road of trust with your child that will never be broken, that child will always have conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will build such a beautiful bridge that so many parents are missing. And I, and I do understand that Karina, many of your viewers, you know, um, it, it, this may not even apply to them. To me, they're mommies and daddies. They nurture, Mm -hmm. they really do nurture the destinies of their children, but there are many that are walking that I call parents. They're, they're a father and they're a mother they created, but they're not invested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is a generation full of false belief systems that come from a religious organization or point of view. Yeah. And it's because my grandpa believed it and my grandma believed it and it was good enough for them. Then it's good enough for me and I'm going to do it. And so I just regurgitate everything that I got and I throw it onto my kid. Yeah. And that can create a lot of damage. It has created damage, oh my God. but there's nothing that isn't repairable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A restore of the breach yes. is the key. We have the ability to correct the timeline by our willingness to be vulnerable in front of a child or in front of our young person. What is so hard about saying, I don't know it all. Yeah. I didn't get it all right. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I I did do the best that I could in the moment. And it really taught me something. You know, it, maybe I was in fear. Maybe I was in survivor mode. Or maybe I was in victim mode. Any of those things. Listen, <laughs> this generation, they understand that. If they don't understand the word, they understand it intuitively. Mm-hmm. Their body feels the frequency of truth. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I want to just piggyback on what Lisa said. And maybe Lisa, we can, we have a few, few more minutes. We have about 10 more minutes. So maybe we could zero in on one more thing. I want to piggyback um, off of you on that. And then we're going to switch a little bit directions. Um, Going back to you helping parents that have children with special uh, gifts or abilities to see. So I know you were mentioning an, an angel, for instance, you know, when a child says, oh my gosh, I saw an angel, but let's go Lisa, even a little bit deeper, maybe for parents that has a child that does not see an angel, that sees a being, maybe a being that is aquatic being, uh, maybe it's a being that is blue, that looks completely different, <laughs> non-human. Um, you know, <laughs> what is a parent that has just been taught angels and demons. Cause the first thing you guys, you want to go to for those of you that, you know, are in that, that were raised like that, um, like me, like Lisa, um, immediately your mind goes to, Oh my gosh, that's a demon. And you go into protective mode, right. As a parent. And sometimes we cause more damage. Well, in that time, in that reality, we cause more damage than good because we want to protect. We don't understand. We engage in fear and so on and so forth. So Lisa, for people that their children are seeing other beings, not an angel, um, I'm going to share my little opinion. Then Lisa, I'm going to give it to you because this is what father is giving you. Um, It's such a beautiful blueprint on how you need to walk with these children and the parents and these teenagers and young adults. So my thing is when you talk to your child, you always go and you look at the fruit of the tree of this particular being, if it's love, if it's life, if it's encouragement, 
If it's because the first thing we want to do is freak out. Oh my gosh, it's not an angel. So it must be a demon. So put that aside. Trust father, spend time with the father. Trust father, trust Yeshua, Holy Spirit. And look at the fruit. If your child is happy, if you see that it's giving your child good messages, messages of hope and of love and empowering, now I'm going to tag team it and give it to you, Lisa. Totally agree. hundred um, percent. If, if say you've got a four-year-old, let's just give a scenario of others that have shared this with me. And, yes. and this, this child, there's a difference when the child wakes up screaming and crying and is traumatized. Yes, you, you are the parent. You want to protect the innocence of your child. hundred percent. Not against that at all. Not speaking against that at all. Because our world has gone sideways because we haven't stood up more for our children. True. But that's one thing. What is the response, the reaction, the state of that child when they're telling you? Is, is this something that's in the moment and we call them night terrors? And, and maybe it just is. But listen, sometimes these children are having reoccurring dreams that are memories. That what you were going? Okay. Yes. So this is okay. So if they are, I would say, if it were my child, I would calm them, soothe them, but get them to the place where they're still able to speak with you, that you don't reject them and you're not trying to call down, you know, fire and brimstone from an old religious belief that actually traumatizes them again. Um, listen, what you need as an adult is you need to be seen and heard and understood, right? Sometimes you need to be validated. I'm not crazy. Don't you think your child needs the same and deserves the very same thing? So it takes this, like I said, this hierarchical thing that we've had about parenting that we, it, it's almost as if we dominate over them and we call that being protective. But protective is to put yourself in front of that child. Mm -hmm. That's protection. Mm -hmm. It's like clothing. It's a layer over that child. Mm -hmm. Very good. So sit with that child. If it's in a trauma, ask questions. Ask questions. Take a, you know, take a notebook in there beside the bed of the child. Let's start walking through this. Baby, draw me a picture. Sweetie, draw me a picture. Can you do that? What that does is get them to focus. And it also, if they are being terrorized by something nefarious, which there are low frequency things there. Yes, we know that. But you know what? That child needs to know that it has authority and power in yes. itself. And you're the one that's responsible to teach them that. Not out of your own fear. Yeah, so, good. so what we do is we repeat our fear onto our children. So if we can get it together and listen and work through solving this together, yeah. I'm telling you the miracle of the answers are amazing. Now, if it's angelic, if it's another being, if it's an aquatic being, you know, comes and floats in the room, you know, maybe there's a dolphin that comes and swims in the room with them in the night. Oh my goodness, I would love that to come and go, sweetie, can I hang out with you tonight? You know, why not engage with that child in their dream world? Because this is the thing that most adults have shut off is their imagination. Yeah, absolutely. I would humble myself as a little child. And I would seek out a curiosity and see what I can learn from my baby. Young adults the same way. We all have things that are special that are, make us very unique. And I don't mean, quote unquote, you're special in that way. I mean, you're unique. You have your own blueprint. You're going to see, hear, feel, touch, sense, smell differently than the way I relate to Karina or Karina would relate to me or to her children. Everyone has their own mix. And so this is the beautiful thing. Isaiah tells us that a little child will lead us. Yeah. And I have never, ever heard that preached 
or taught, only spoken about when someone makes a comparison to something else. They'll say, out of the mouths of babes, we've heard that. Mm -hmm. but, but when even Isaiah will tell us a little child will lead us, I believe the revealed word, the revelation word of that is I must become as a little child mm -hmm. so that I can be led into the truth. Yeah, that's, that's a powerful. And we scripture. learn from them. Yeah, we that's... learn from a younger generation. Yeah. Um, you know, and if we, we talk to, if we talk to our native brothers and sisters, these children are sent on quest, some at nine, 12 years old. And because the elders know that this child has a destiny yeah. and they do everything they can to rally around that child to see it forth. This is a bit different than being soccer mama. Let me yeah. tell you, I'm sorry. This is investing yes. actually in your future. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, Lisa, you just had said something and we don't have that much more um, left, but I do want to say this and then ask you, ask you how people can contact you. If we as parents invested in the spiritual growth of our children, as much as we invest in stuff that it will never benefit them, We need to see that there is treasure in our children and a treasure that goes beyond this physical realm, a treasure that extends and that can bring change to this physical realm and then some. And to learn to cultivate that and do not cultivate anything out of fear when it comes to your child. So if your child has gifts, if they see stuff, if they tell you stuff, don't engage with fear in helping this child maneuver, even like Lisa said, if it's night terror, if it's memories, traumatic memories from a different life that are bleeding in, do not engage with it in fear because then the enemy, the dark energies are really winning. So we want you to win. We want you to win and your child to win so they can become who they were created to become, right, Lisa? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so, well, before we, uh, Lisa, we're gonna ask you how they can get in touch with you and all of that, but just wanna let you guys know, we're going to be going in a little bit deeper of a session with Lisa in our next um, next recording called Can You Handle the Truth? And you can find that on our Patreon's uh, platform, which is the Quest for Truth um the quest for truth patreons with karina pataki and this is where you can find all of behind the scenes uh sessions that we call can you handle the truth because we will be going deeper um lisa i want us to talk more about reincarnation and yeah. the memories of the children coming in with that and you know just dive in a little bit deeper in that and in that scripture that you said uh and a child sorry and a child shall lead them because we, you and I have discussed some of that things before. So that's what we're going to be talking with Lisa on our next session called Can You Handle the Truth? Now, Lisa, before we go, and you heard my alarm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Justice put that on there. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Children. Um, how can they people, how can they get a hold of you? And um, I know you said you would like to do like a meeting hub where all these the parents with the children and the teenagers and the young adults can get kind of together. Do you have a little description of that and how they can get a hold of you? Okay. Um, in the immediate time, I have a website and it's just Lisa Gavrin um, dot com, and you can reach there. It talks about the Meraki journey or the Meraki path, which means everything that you do, you do with love and a passion. And, um, but that's being adapted. So there's some work going on there, but it does give you information, email, that type of thing. You can um, send emails to me that way and we can chat. Um, and then I'm in the creation of the revelation generation. So it's brand new. Um, I, my thought today is what we'll do is if there's enough information and um, uh, interest going on here um, within this, then we'll go through the Facebook 
platform to get us started and we'll connect there. And um, I'll create a page there where we can go in and we can actually just have chat rooms and let's just develop. I actually would love to help develop this with this revelation generation and help pull us together and uh, and hear from you. So if you're a young person, um, anyone under 35, um, I'm interested to hear from you and let's see how we can build this forward and we can build this bridge and close this gap. Yeah, that's tremendous. And it's so needed, so needed. We got to close these gaps and we got to give the children, the teenagers, the adolescents, their voice back. Thank you, Lisa, so much for being with us. This was amazing. You did so Beautiful. wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. you guys, thank you for being with us. I know that this has blessed you again. Um, we were, we will put Lisa's information at the end of the video. Um, just engage with the experiences of your child and allow them to have a voice, not based in fear, based in love, truth, and revelation. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this has blessed you and looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. We love you. Bye-bye. Thank you.